Today we have a crazy story of revenge permanently ending someone's football career. We'll get to that in a bit, but first, I took revenge on my cheating girlfriend. My girlfriend and I had been dating for almost two and a half years. I met her on the road while I was driving. I can remember vividly how the scene played out. She wore a red jumpsuit and clutched a small flashlight as if her life depended on it while chatting with her friends. Immediately, I searched around for a spot I could park so I wouldn't lose her. I quickly saw one and did not hesitate. I got down from my car and hurriedly walked to meet her. As soon as I did, I made a frantic effort to get her attention, which she didn't disappoint. I asked to speak with her, and she responded by asking me the most hilarious question ever. She asked if I was sure it was her I wanted to talk with. I let out a hearty chuckle before responding with a yes. And so we walked away a few steps away from her friends for some privacy and spoke. She gave me a little tough time before telling me any of her details. Since it was getting late, I didn't want to delay her any longer, as her friends were already making expressions that show that we needed to round up whatever we were discussing. I got her phone number, promising to ring her. I could sense a smirk lurking at the corner of her mouth. I thanked her friends for being patient, got into my car, and drove off. While driving, images of her kept reappearing in my head, so it took me a little effort to concentrate. She was in her early 20s while I was in my mid-20s. As soon as I got home, I made sure I showered, had everything tidied up, and made dinner for myself before finally settling down to ring her. I called the first time, but there was no response. I tried the second time, still no one picked up. I decided to stop after the third time, and like they say, the third time's always a charm. I called the third time, but before it even rang, she picked up. I said hello and introduced myself. She didn't sound surprised. It was like she'd been expecting my call. She quickly tendered an apology for the missed calls. She told me she wasn't nearby, so she didn't hear when the phone rang. I told her it was alright and that she needed not to worry. The next day was to be the day before Sunday. It was suitable for my plans with her. Without beating around the bush, I asked her if she'd be accessible on the morrow for a dinner date, and she responded in the affirmative. I was more than delighted because she accepted my offer without thinking twice. She asked where we would eat, and I said it was up to her to decide. She decided to withhold that till we met the next day. I promised to pick her up at her apartment if she would give me her address. And to my surprise, she gave it to me without batting an eyelid. I could hear the delight in her voice, but I didn't want to jump to conclusions, so I overlooked it. We proceeded to ask about how our day went and other irrelevant things. I decided to call it a day because she needed to rest, as I wouldn't want her looking like she was going to slump any moment. I sensed her reluctance. It seemed like she was already prepared to go on and on and on again. I wished her a good night and hung up. I kept smiling to myself before finally drifting off to slumber. I slept like a baby because my dreams had her in them. I felt complete. It was more of a feeling that I'd already found the right person for me. Or so I thought. I awoke to the sounds of birds chirping and the crowing of the roosters. The day seemed promising and bright. I went about my usual activities, whistling my favorite sound. I couldn't wait to see her and profess my intentions. I tried hard to concentrate, but it felt like she had taken over my head. Sooner than expected, evening came. I grabbed my phone excitedly like a kid that had just been given candies. I went to the call logs and dialed her number. A sweet voice spoke from the other end. I asked if she had gotten dressed and she said yes. I told her I'd be with her in the next 30 minutes and she agreed. I felt excitement radiating from within. I got into my car, started the ignition and zoomed off. While driving, I already imagined how our date would go. I followed the address she gave me and from afar, I located her place. It was conspicuous. I highlighted from my car while leaning lazily on it. I dialed her number, beckoning her to meet me outside. She came out to meet me looking as fabulous as I imagined her to be. She smiled mischievously as she entered the car. She told me where we should have dinner and we drove there. The location was just perfect for us. We met another lovey-dovey like us too. We found a calm and serene spot and made ourselves comfortable. A menu was already placed on the table, so we ordered what we were familiar with. While waiting for us to be attended to, I told her to tell me about herself, which she did. She was a 200 level law student. She was very fluent in speaking. I noticed her self-composure as well. We chatted about a lot of things. Each time she smiled at me, my heart skipped a beat. 
Her pupils were brown, she was short and cheerful. I couldn't help but stare. Then I decided to pop the question. I asked her if she would love to go on a date with me. There was silence. She just stared at me as if trying to read my thoughts or search for the sincerity in my heart. Then she blurted out a yes. For a moment I couldn't believe it. I was tempted to ask her the same question she asked me when I met her that night on the road if she was sure she meant it. Again, without hesitancy, she looked at me with a smile, but slowly this time, she said yes. She would go on a date with me. The tension between us was eased as we ate our meal, while she stole glances at me occasionally. Once we were done, we strolled around, played a few games, and took our leave. She thanked me for dinner, and I thanked her for creating time to meet with me. I dropped her off at home and drove off, so that's where our love story began. We started dating and it felt heavenly to us. My girlfriend never missed my calls or left my messages unreplied. She started coming over to my apartment to spend the weekends. Most of the time she would prepare my favorite food, we'd watch movies on Netflix, and she'd come back home on Sunday evenings. We always had long phone calls before going to bed. Even after two years our relationship felt new, like we were falling in love all over again. As the saying goes, good things never last. My girlfriend started acting weird and edgy around me. I didn't think about it because it was just a phase that would come and go, but it began to become more and more noticeable. Still, I didn't show any signs of concern or worry toward her. I felt she was unhappy with where I was posted to. I was to leave for Abuja in the next few weeks to serve. I wasn't happy as well that I would be leaving soon. I felt we hadn't spent enough time together. Nevertheless, I needed to go. The day finally came, and the atmosphere at the airport wasn't one I would love to remember. It was the saddest day of my life. I was to spend one full year in the farthest part of the country. My girlfriend cried her eyes out on my shoulders. Even when I boarded the plane, I couldn't look her in the eye. I arrived at my destination within two to three hours. I lodged in a hotel for that day. I was perturbed because I hadn't heard from her since my arrival, so I called her. It seemed she had dialed my number several times and it wasn't reachable. We spoke at length and I told her I needed to freshen up and attend to other things. As usual, she hung up with reluctance. I did what I had to do and darkness soon approached. We spoke again before I went to bed and soon enough we both adapted. Gradually the call started reducing. My girlfriend always made excuses for not picking up or returning my calls. First, she made me believe that she was so engrossed in preparing for her exams, which I did without any second thoughts. After her exams, within a month, she continued with the strange attitude. It became so frustrating and exhausting, I refused to think that she was cheating. However, every action of hers pointed out that she was. She never would. She knew deep down I loved her and would do anything to make her happy. She wasn't lacking anything. I never laid a hand on her for any reason. I was faithful, and she was as well. Slowly, we started having unnecessary misunderstandings. Our disagreements were crossed over to the next day. Our misunderstandings slowly let malice and lies creep in. It was like she was ever ready to fight me. It hurt me to think that she did all this intentionally. I started making plans to come back. I needed to know what she was up to. The more I stayed here, the more it ate me up inside. I lost my peace of mind. I had no intention of telling her I'd be home, so the day I was to leave came. I took a plane, and in two hours, I came home. Thank goodness I had my key with me. I entered her apartment, and it was obvious she hadn't been home for two to three days. Her bed was made, but hadn't been laid on. The house was neatly arranged. I decided to spend the night at her place till she came out. The next day was a Sunday. I made sure I got everything I needed to avoid going out. I didn't want to be seen by anyone. I watched a movie on my phone when a car drove into her complex and parked in front of her apartment. I quickly took a video of her as she got out from the front seat of the vehicle. The driver whom I'd never seen before. The gentleman was a bit older than me. He got down as well and gave her a peck before he left. My girlfriend watched with dreamy eyes as he zoomed off. I hurriedly went inside before she returned to reality so she wouldn't notice me. I went to her room and sat on her bed, pretending to read a book. When I heard she entered, I rushed to meet her in the sitting room as I shouted, Surprise! 
She was too stunned to speak. She stood right where she was, rooted to the spot as if she had seen a ghost. I waved a hand at her face, and immediately she returned. She hugged me so tight that I wondered if she was the one I'd seen outside with another guy a few minutes ago. I was already seething and boiling inside, but I was cautious about hiding my anger. So I asked where she was coming from and why I hadn't heard from her. She told me she went home to see her parents. I played along and asked how they were, to which she responded by saying they were doing fine. I felt hurt and used that she looked me in the eye and lied. I made up my mind to pay her back in her coins. I already saw a future with her, but she had forfeited it. I didn't put in the effort to renew our dying relationship. I was slowly losing interest. It was painful, but I had no choice left. I continually put up with everything my girlfriend did while waiting for an opportunity to execute my revenge. Finally, the day presented itself. I told my girlfriend I needed a certain amount of money, blackmailing her with the video I had on my phone. I threatened to leave her after showing the video of the guy she was cheating on me with. She had no choice but to do my bidding. Every time I needed money, I used her to get it. I wasn't using the money for anything, I just kept on saving it. Then, I started giving her the same attitude she gave me while I was in Abuja. It made me glad to see that she was becoming miserable. She looked like something was gradually eating her from the inside. Well, I didn't care. All that mattered to me was that she had to feel the pain and torture I endured while she cheated right under my nose. She became less chatty and social. I moved back to Abuja after spending a week at her place. I paid someone to be spying on her, and guess what? There was no change of heart. It seemed she had chosen her newly found lover over me. I kept on extorting money from her using the video clip as blackmail. Everything just went on this way. Fortunately, I met a young lady rounding up her degree program. We talked, and within a few months, things started getting serious between us. I was done serving, but I didn't come home immediately. I fell in love with this young lady, and we started planning our wedding. Wedding bells were ringing by the corner, and before anyone knew what was happening, we got married. My ex-girlfriend didn't know anything that was going on with me. Probably she thought that I'd forgiven her and we'd moved on. But I was yet to surprise her. I sent the video clip I had with me to the guy she was going out with and the pictures I took with her, including videos we made together. I paid someone to locate him. I sent my wedding pictures to her after doing that. I used the money I got from her to travel abroad with my newly wedded wife. The last I heard about her, she slumped and was rushed to the hospital. It was a great way to get my revenge on my cheating girlfriend. Wherever the story took place, I'm wondering if there was like a social pressure that caused them to be extortable. Cause just with the video that OP recorded, I don't understand how she could be convinced to hand that money over hand over fist. Our next story is why my ex will never get to play football professionally again. Back in college, I met a very cute guy. He was a freshman just like me, a famous football player in his high school. He was a captain of the football team in his school and so popular that the varsity team looked forward to him showing up in college. I met him at a party that my sister's boyfriend, who was also a football player, had organized for their new teammates. They invited girls to the party, so my sister took me. I was super elated about the party. It was my first college party and I'd looked forward to being a college girl and living on campus and doing all the fun campus girl stuff. I wore a leather mini skirt and threw on a long sleeved blouse that showed a little bit of cleavage. My hair was tied in my signature mid ponytail and I wore a silver pair of earrings. You are dressed to kill, my sister commented when I got into her car. She came to my dorm building to pick me up for the party. Yes, you have this fashion thing on lockdown, her friend who was riding shotgun added. You are going to turn heads. I smiled and thanked them. That was the goal, to turn heads. The party was nothing like my naive self had seen. My twin brother and I used to get invited to all these great parties all the time, but my dad is so sexist that he never let me go. My twin was allowed to, but I wasn't. Okay, technically he wasn't allowed, but my dad provided no strict consequences for when he broke the rules. I, on the other hand, could never even dare. It's not safe for girls out there, those boys are wild. How about a sleepover with your friends here in the house? 
he would offer when he notices a pout. The boys at the party were hotties, very cute guys with attractive biceps and rugged looks. One of them caught my eye. He was too handsome. I literally felt weakness in my joints. It was on that night that I figured that the expression weak in the knees could be literal. His lips were a perfect shape and he had a small scar on his chin. Somehow that made him even more attractive. He smiled at me and I nodded, concealing my attraction or at least trying to. Someone seems to have his eyes on you. My sister's best friend cooed in my ear in a sing-songy manner. I looked up and saw the handsome guy walking toward me. He looked familiar as he came closer. You, he said in a deep baritone voice when he got close to me. It was then I realized where I knew him. He came to my school once with his football team. I was a cheerleader in my school until my grades dropped and my dad immediately ordered my removal. I met him in one of the games. I couldn't remember what we said to each other, but I knew we'd spoken to each other, and I recognized his deep baritone voice from when we spoke. He said, hello beautiful, and I said hi. We stared long and hard at each other, and then he mentioned the name of my high school, asking if that was where we had met. That's correct, I affirmed with a nod. He said, you're the cheerleader. That's correct too. He said, look at God, I knew I would see you again. You look even more beautiful than the last time I saw you. My face flushed. I said, thank you, I appreciate the compliment. He laughed and said, why are you being so formal? Hey, dance with me. I agreed and we danced together most of the night. I take it you play for the varsity team? I asked him as we danced. He said, yes ma'am. I said, I'm not surprised, you're a good player. He said, I am. I'm about to change the game of football for this university. I said, wow, watch the bragging. He laughed heartily and said, it's not bragging if it's true, just stating what's gonna happen. He was a gentleman that night, took my purse when I had to go to the bathroom, got me drinks, and didn't look at me weirdly when I told him that I don't drink alcohol. He even mentioned that he admired me for it. He took my number when my sister and I were leaving, her friend went home with her boyfriend and promised to call. In the new week, I waited patiently for him to call, but he didn't. I hoped and even said a silent prayer. I was already crazy about him. I'd planned a future for us in my head and I'd even picked out a wedding dress. I'd imagined us being the cool campus couple who went to parties and functions together. He was a total cutie and I had to have him. My sister rolled her eyes when I went to her apartment and told her that he still hadn't called. She said, honey, don't bother yourself too much about him. Most of these football players are players, okay? I frowned. I said, your boyfriend's not a player. She said, well, maybe not him, but he's the exception. And even dating him comes with too many problems. Do you want a boyfriend? The football team is not the place to go shopping for men. But he's so cute, I said, pouting. She said, well, maybe, but so are you. You're catching yourself. Maybe just let it go if he doesn't call by the end of today. That night, my Prince Charming called. What does my sister know, I thought to myself. I've been so swamped with practice, but I promise you were all that was on my mind all week. I mean, other than football. He laughed dryly. I said, I'm not gonna lie, I looked forward to your call. At some point, I thought you'd never call. He said, that could never happen. I like you already, and I look forward to seeing what will come out of this. I smiled. He was just as hooked as I was with him. That weekend was a dream. I spent most of my time with him. Even when we weren't doing anything together, I went with him to the field and just watched him practice. It was fun to just be around him. After that weekend together, we started hanging out a lot. We went from hanging out to hooking up. He would ask me to send certain kinds of photos and I'm going to be honest, at first, I was skeptical about sending them. I have heard a hundred stories of men leaking pictures, videos, and all, but I was scared that if I didn't send that, he would leave me. That fear showed up all through our relationship because I worried every time that he would just leave me if I did something wrong. He was a star football player in the school. He was seriously good looking and knew just how to charm a woman. Nearly all the time we went out, he turned heads and it was expected because he had that same effect on me too. I knew he could easily replace me, and I tried all that I could to be irreplaceable. I searched the internet for ways to take very nice, inappropriate photos. I looked at all the men's magazines that I could lay my hands on, and I wanted to look very appealing to him. Two months into our relationship, 
I found out that my boyfriend and I had not defined what we had going on. That pissed my sister off. She said, you're going to regret ever letting a guy take up so much of your time like that if you don't define what you've got going on. I said, we just met. I'm sure you'll ask me to be his girlfriend soon. I said in his defense, it was a lie. I too had been worried that we hadn't defined our relationship and I wanted him to. I was also worried that he would never ask me to be his girlfriend, but I was too scared to ask. My boyfriend asked me to be his girlfriend two weeks after we met. Men know when they want you around for the long haul. Don't let that man play you, honey. I resented my sister for how easy she had it. It was easy to say that her boyfriend was crazy about her and they'd been together for more than two years. I called my ex and asked to meet up for coffee that evening. He came over to our coffee spot and I told him that I needed him to define our relationship. I'm not trying to make you do anything or force your hand, but I really need to know where I stand. I also told him that I was ready to end it all if he wouldn't define what we had. You're my girlfriend, he said with a big smile on his face and kissed my eyes. I was excited. I expected him to resist, say he doesn't believe in tags or walk away. Now I wish I didn't. It was as though my ex was waiting patiently for when we'll officially be boyfriend-girlfriend to unleash his meanness on me. The first time he cursed me out in public was at a party. He saw this girl and was flirting with her, so I asked him later on if he knew and told him I found it disrespectful. He yelled at me and told me to go on and end our relationship if I wasn't comfortable with him saying a harmless hello to his friends. I ended up apologizing that night, but that only emboldened him the more. He flirted with girls right in my presence. He once asked a girl for her number. If I tried to raise any objections, he would tell me to end the relationship if I wasn't cool with it and then not speak to me for days. I always had to send him several texts apologizing before he'd take my calls. Once, he asked me to take off my clothes and told me all the things he felt were wrong with my body. I felt like crap the whole year I was with him. I wasn't always a confident girl, but I became very insecure in that relationship. He would compare me to other girls he meets every day and tell me that I should feel lucky that he chose me. I did feel lucky that he chose me. I was neck deep in the emotional abuse until I met a friend in one of my classes and she changed me forever. I can't remember what it was that we were arguing about in class, but she said something about how words are just like bricks and whips and they could tear a person down as fast as any kind of physical pressure or pain applied on the body. I remember getting all teary eyed and walking up to her at the end of the day to ask if I could pour my heart out to her. She was warm towards me and I told her all about my relationship. She didn't tell me what to do, but she told me instead that she trusted that I knew what to do. And she was right. I went to my sister's and asked if I could stay for a week. My sister allowed me and I stayed over at her apartment. Without my phone or any means of contacting my ex, I realized then that I preferred to live without my ex than with him. When I returned to my dorm, I checked my phone expecting to see messages from my ex, but I got none. I knew it was time to end it. I sent a text telling him I was done. He drove over later and asked to see me. I reluctantly went down to see him in his car. One of the boys' parents is hosting a formal event this week, he said. We'll be going out together. Would you like to get a new dress? He acted as though I had never sent that message. I'm breaking up with you, I told him quietly. He said, no girl has ever broken up with me. I said, well, I am breaking up with you now. You'll regret this, he said through clenched teeth. The last time I saw him that angry was when his coach suspended him for getting into a fight with one of his teammates. I swiftly got out of his car. I was scared that he could hurt me. He had never hit me or tried to, but there was no telling what someone who was that angry could do to me. I raced into my room, my heart beating fast. That evening, an anonymous account on social media posted all of the inappropriate photos I'd sent to him and tagged everyone who was a mutual friend. The account even tagged my sister's boyfriend. Of course, we knew who it was, but there was no evidence to prove that he had done it. I called him, cried, and begged him to take the account down, but he didn't say a word. He just hung up in the middle of the speech I'd made, hoping to change his mind. He took it down after 27 hours of putting it up. 
but by that time my pictures had gone viral on campus. My dad called my sister crying. He was hurt and embarrassed. My dad tried to get the school to punish him, but they refused. My ex was their star athlete, and there was no proof he did it. The friend I'd told what happened found out about the whole thing and reached out to me. She came up with a golden plan to invite my boyfriend to a private place and record him confessing to having leaked the photos. One huge flaw narcissists have is a lack of self-awareness. Even when you're kind to them, they don't think it's because you're kind. They think it's because they're special and you can't help it. I started texting my ex telling him I missed him. It was specific about what I missed about him, his lips, how he kissed me everywhere, etc. At first his guard was up, but he soon fell for it. One day, the opportunity came and I went over to his apartment. I asked him about the photos and videos after that. I cried for more effect. He apologized and swore that he only did that out of anger. You don't have to worry about that because nobody cares anymore, he assured me. My friend's recording watch picked it all up and I took it to the school authorities. They were lax in doing something, so my sister and I emailed the football federation and I was invited to speak with someone in authority. I did and he agreed that what my ex did was despicable. My ex was invited too and long story short, he was banned from playing professionally for some years. He could play for the varsity team, but only in intra-school competitions. That certainly ruined his career because he would lose several years and getting back in would be difficult. Before his third year, he dropped out of college and stopped playing altogether. I'm glad I got my revenge, or justice, and I would do it again if I had to. And oh, my ex was wrong. I'm almost 32 and people still remember that I'm the girl whose photos leaked. Honestly, although their football career was shut down and that is pretty good revenge, this guy should still walk away from this feeling lucky because they should have gotten a charge for that. But with that being said, that's all the time we have for today. Now if you want to hear another absolutely crazy story of revenge, check out that video on the left. Or if you missed my latest video, check out that video on the right. That said, I'll see you all next time with some more stories.